Hello, mate. Are you doing anything on Saturday? Hey, nothing. Why is that? Do you want to go to the pub for a drink? Yeah, that sounds cool. What time do you fancy meeting? How about 8 p.m.? Perfect. See you on Saturday at 8 p.m. Looking forward to it. Me too. See you then. Today's lesson is all about making plans with your friends to go out and to do things. Who doesn't enjoy going out and having fun with your friends? Okay, so let's take a look at some things that we can do with our friends. For example, we can go shopping. Now be careful here, don't say go to shopping, because when we use to, this means that we are going to a place. Shopping is more of an action. For example, go swimming, go cycling. Other things that we can do are, of course, go to the beach, go for a drink, go for a drive, and of course, play sports. For example, play tennis. All of these are good examples of things that we can do outside of the house. However, we sometimes want to invite our friends to come over to our house. That's why we use come over. For example, come over to watch a movie, come over for dinner or for lunch, and come over for a drink, or come over to watch the football. These are all examples of things that we can do with our friends at home. So first, we need to check our friend's schedule. So let's take a look at some phrases on how we can check on their schedule. So here are some good examples. The first one, are you free on and then the day? For example, are you free on Saturday? Are you free on Sunday morning? The next one we can use with, for example, longer holidays, such as the weekend, the summer holidays, Christmas. So we can say, have you got any plans for, and then the holiday? For example, have you got any plans for the weekend? Have you got any plans for tomorrow evening? Because we are not using the day. Therefore, we don't need to say on tomorrow evening. Another good example is, are you doing anything on? Are you doing anything on Sunday? And another example is, what are you doing on? For example here, what are you doing on Thursday after work? And we can answer it by saying yes. But saying just yes is a little bit boring. So we want to sound a little more natural. So take a look at these examples on how we can say yes. For example, yeah, I'm free. Or nothing planned. Or nothing. Why is that? Another one, nothing much. And the last example is no plans. For example, are you free on Monday? No plans. Are you free on Sunday evening? Yeah, I'm free. Hello, mate. Are you doing anything on Saturday? Hey, nothing. Why is that? So the next part to this conversation is to ask them to actually do something. For example, if you want to play tennis, you want to ask your friend if they want to play tennis with you. The first option we have here is, would you like to? Now, this is quite a nice and polite question. For example, would you like to come over for dinner? Would you like to go for a drive? Would you like to play tennis? All of these are good examples of using a polite question. Now, the next option is, do you want to? Now, this is a much more casual question. Rather than using, would you like to, which is, of course, the more polite version, you can use, do you want to? For example, do you want to play tennis? Do you want to go for a drink? Do you want to come over to watch the football? 
all of these are great examples of using a casual question. The third option is quite a British sounding question. So we say, do you fancy plus the ing form of the verb? As you can see from the example here, do you fancy watching the new Top Gun movie? Actually, I heard it's excellent. I really want to watch it. For another example, we can say, do you fancy going for lunch? Or do you fancy going to the pub? Which, of course, is very British uh, in itself, going to the pub. So now we're going to take a look at how to respond to those questions. Of course, we can respond by saying yes, and we can also respond by saying no as well. But as usual, we don't just want to use one word answers. So what can we use instead of saying just yes and no? Let's take a look at using yes. We can start by saying that sounds and then of course a positive. For example, that sounds cool. That sounds great. That sounds amazing. If you want to be even more positive, of course. Another good example is sure, why not? The next one is quite a good natural phrase to use and that is I'd be up for that. And the last one is, yeah, let's do that. All of these are great ways to saying yes without actually having to use the one word answer of just yes. Because, as we all know, it's boring. Do you want to go to the pub for a drink? Yeah, that sounds cool. Now, before saying no, perhaps you might want to suggest something different to do. Because maybe what your friend has already suggested you don't particularly enjoy or you don't want to do it. Therefore, you want to change it to something else. For example, if your friend said, do you fancy watching the football tomorrow? You can say, not really. How about going to the pub? So you're suggesting another activity to do. Another good example of this is, I'd rather something if you don't mind. For example, I'd rather go to the cinema if you don't mind. Or we can use, can we do something instead? For example, can we go shopping instead? But if you really don't want to do something, then of course you can say no. But if we do say no directly, it can be a little bit rude and some people might feel a little offended by it. They might not like just saying no. So let's take a look at two examples of where we don't just say no. Do you fancy coming over and watching the game? Can we play on the Xbox instead? We can say maybe next time. For example, do you fancy going to the pub tomorrow? Maybe next time. Meaning that you don't really want to do it. So you are saying no without saying no directly. Another example is you can just say, I think I'm going to stay home. Again, this is another polite way of saying no if you're being asked to do something. So how do we respond to people wanting to change the activity or saying no, then we've got these ways that we can use to react to that kind of situation. Firstly, we can say no worries or that's totally fine. Another one is sure, let's do that instead. And the last one is I don't mind or I don't mind at all. For example, I think I'm just going to stay home. No worries or not really. How about playing tennis? Sure, let's do that instead. All of these are great ways to responding to negative feedback. For example, changing or saying no. Can we play on the Xbox instead? Sure, no problem. OK, now for this video, we're going to focus on saying yes. Otherwise, the conversation finishes and we don't want that. We want that to continue. 
So for today's video, we're going to focus on how to say yes and then what happens after saying yes. And usually we need to ask some questions so that we can get more information about the activity or of course the event. Some common questions that you might hear are what time or what time do you want to meet? Another one, what time do you fancy meeting? Remember using the ing after fancy. The next one, what time shall we meet? Again, this is quite British using shall we. It's quite a polite sentence for us to use, but many British people actually do use it, me included. And the last one is all about place. Where do you want to go? Or you could shorten it. Where do you want to go? Or if you want to sound even more British, you can say, where do you fancy going? So to answer these questions, we can simply, of course, ask about the time. For example, is 8 p.m. good? Is 8 p.m. okay for you? Is 8 p.m. cool? Another one is using how about. For example, how about 1 p.m.? Or we can say, let's meet at, and then the time. Let's meet at 11 a.m. If the question is about place, you can say, I want to go, and then the place. I want to go to Shinjuku. I want to go to the shopping mall. Or you could use the contracted version. I want to go. I want to go to the beach. I want to go to the park. If you're somebody who can drive a car, you can actually go and pick your friend up from their house. So a great one to say is, I'll pick you up at 7.30. What time do you fancy meeting? How about 8 p.m.? Now again, we need to respond to these questions because we're dealing with time and sometimes it's good for us or it's not good for us. So once again, there are two options. We can either say yes or we can either say no. And let's take a look at how we can do that. Now we've already looked at saying yes before. For example, that's cool, that's fine, that's no problem with me. Or yeah, that's good, that's great, no problem at all. Or perfect. We can use all of these to say yes to a time. However, sometimes the time isn't good, so we want to change it. Here are some great examples of what we can use. Can we make it a little later? I have work. And then again, the next person has to answer with probably a yes. Sure, no problem at all. Another way of suggesting a different time, you can use or what about and then the time or what about 10 p.m. The next one is you can say I need to do something at and then a time. So how about and then suggest another time. For example, I need to go to the hairdressers at 2 p.m. So how about 3 p.m. Or another one is can we make it and then the time instead? Can we make it 8 p.m. instead? Or if the time is too early, then you can simply say that's too early for me is and then a time okay. For example, that's too early for me is 10 a.m. okay? Now all of these ways are great for us to change the time. So this is a very, very good way for us to try to negotiate the time with our friends. I finish work at six, can we make it seven instead? Yeah, that's fine. So let's take a look at an example of a whole conversation. All right, mate, are you free on Wednesday evening? All right, mate, yeah, I'm free. Do you fancy coming over and watching the game? Can we play on the Xbox instead? Sure, no problem. Okay, what time? How about 6 p.m.? I finish work at six, can we make it seven instead? Yeah, that's fine. See you on Wednesday at seven. See you then. Okay guys, that was all about learning how to schedule or make plans with your friends to do something. If you like the video, please leave a like and also make a comment down below as well. And if you can, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel as well. It will help me help you improve your English much quicker, of course.
And also there is a PDF file that goes along with this lesson. You can grab your free PDF in the link below. It has all of the phrases we looked at today. Also, if you haven't already, check out this video here. It's all about everyday idioms that you need to know. If you want to sound more natural and more like a native speaker, I highly recommend using these idioms here. It also has a free PDF file as well. So go ahead, watch this one next.